How's it going guys? Just finished up uh, another knife and sheath today and uh, this is something actually pretty unusual. Uh, pardon me for one second here while I take this out of the sheath so I don't have to make two clips and then edit it together. There we go. It's a snug fit. And you're probably thinking, what's so unusual about that? Looks like another Puko. Well, the unusual thing is on the other side of the blade. This is a Yakut style of knife. Uh, the Yakut are the indigenous uh, people of Siberia, or at least part of Siberia, um, up in the far north. And uh, this is the traditional style of knife that they have made and used for centuries. And this side, the weird looking side here, is ground completely flat. And it has this uh, concave area forged into the blade. It's forged out. With a, with a hollow there, then totally ground flat on this side, and then the other side is a convex grind right down to the edge. And um, they cut pretty well. The, the edge geometry on this thing is, uh, like I said, it's pretty unusual. This is the first one of these I've ever attempted to make. Um, and it's something else, the way this thing cuts. Uh, this is possibly the sharpest knife I've ever made. Uh, well, it's definitely the sharpest as far as the just the edge geometry of it. It comes to a extremely fine edge because of the way that grind is. Basically, the only secondary bevel on there is... Uh, what I got on it just from uh, stropping it on the convex side. Um, incredibly sharp. Uh, these are not uh, super popular but somewhat uh, popular. A little bit of a cult following with some of the bushcraft types because they cut wood extremely well. Uh, especially for kind of a Cuts where you're scooping out wood. Pretty good for that. Really bites in. Um, there's a lot of theories about why the blades were made this way. And I have my own ideas on that from the perspective of a maker who has actually forged actually a couple of these. I have another blade that I'm working on too. Uh, the most common theory that I hear as to why the blades have this hollow in it is that um, steel is really scarce, it was and even probably even still is really scarce for the people who make these so they do this to save material which um, kind of makes sense in a certain way I mean this blade has this hollow hollowed out area in there which actually is only about a sixteenth of an inch thick or so on this one so you know theoretically this blade has less steel in it than it would if it didn't have that hollowed out spot well the thing is like I said from the perspective of making one of these I forged the blade you know forged the uh, the profile out and then forged that hollow in there now I didn't get any steel back when I forged that hollow in. Uh, I could have just as easily just forged a normal bevel on each side like a regular knife and it would have been the same amount of steel. Um, in fact, doing this takes a, a bit of time and uh, probably consumed more fuel than making a normal blade and I would think fuel is pretty scarce for for those people too up there in Siberia. I don't know what they actually uh, have traditionally used for fuel for their forges you know back hundreds of years ago uh, I would assume charcoal that's the usual you know primitive forging fuel 
but wood is pretty scarce out there on the tundra too so fuel would have been uh, kind of rare so I don't see how that really saves them any resources to do that um, I've also seen it said that this saves weight which is basically the you know the same as the uh, saving steel theory theoretically it's lighter than the blade would be if it didn't have that but once again when I was forging this blade it didn't get any lighter when I forged that hollow in um, and it doesn't make the blade appreciably any larger either you know if you're thinking well maybe the blade gets bigger so it's lighter than you know a blade of same size would be it, it doesn't really expand the size to any significant degree um, another theory is the primitive bone knife theory that they uh, and this this much is probably true in that before metalworking they probably made knives from the bones of animals they would split in half and you know the bone is hollow so it's rounded on one side and the other side with the with the uh, you know the hollow part in it they would have kind of ground flat so it would have been flat but with a hollowed out area down the middle and that uh, you know that much is is true I think but then the thinking is that when they started making knives out of iron that they said I guess you know all the bone knives are made this way and it's flat and it has a hollow in it therefore our steel knives must be made in the same way because that's how we do it which is kind of stupid um, and I see no reason why anyone you know even uh, primitive iron workers would have gone to uh, such a great deal of trouble to make a an iron knife that's shaped like a bone knife when they when it would have been much easier to just make a flat normal blade so my theory as to why the blades are made this way um, I think they just like the way that this edge geometry performs um, one th I, and I did uh, hear this this theory somewhat from other people is that uh, you know they uh, a common thing that they end up doing with their knives is cutting frozen meat and they are some meat-eating people up there they don't really eat vegetables much if at all up in Siberia especially if you're if you're kind of you know semi nomadic tribal type and um, I think that this geometry of being flat on one side and with a convex uh, grind on the other side performs really well in cutting frozen meat and probably other tough things and so they like the way that that worked and the reason for that hollow is uh, just to reduce the surface area to make that easier to maintain because the way these are sharpened is you just put this side flat on the stone and and sharpen that and don't really mess with this side much if, if at all basically you just strop it to uh, to take the burr off and I mean you could if you needed to work on the geometry of it you know you sharpen it on a stone you know a little bit but generally speaking you wouldn't sharpen it from this side um, you just uh, kind of grind this side flat on the stone so that's my theory and uh, it's a pretty sharp looking knife pardon the pun I think it's a elk antler whoop, elk antler up here awesome the cat's puking I don't know if you can hear that hopefully not anyways elk antler and some leather spaces with some uh, white fiber spaces and spacers in between there and uh, a piece of fancy ash that I had saved and I dug out of the wood pile and check out the grain on that that's one of the uh, nicest piece of woods I've worked with in a long time
and I really didn't think it was going to be much of anything when uh, when I was sawing the uh, you know piece for the handle out of the big chunk, but uh, it's got some serious grain to it. And, uh, you know, this is the very typical uh, shape and size, basically, as far as the handle. Actually, the blades are often longer than this. This is like four and a half inches, I think, which is a relatively small one. Um, generally, the handles are, you know, depending on the length of the blade, are about the same or a little longer than the blade. This one is... Uh, Handles about four and three quarter inches, about a quarter inch longer than the blade, and uh, typical shape, kind of flat on the back end. That's how I uh, generally see them. And uh, that's about it. Sheath has this, you know, pretty uh, old-fashioned kind of dangler thing on there which uh, still works pretty good and it's a real good fit in the sheath and if you're interested I haven't uh, even listed this thing on eBay yet it's raining today so I can't get out to uh, take pictures of it to put on there but uh, hit me up if you're interested um, I'd like to get like uh, heck I could uh, really use the dough right about now so I'll say like 120 uh, shipped which is um, quite low generally for these knives really but uh, you know special rate for the subscribers so uh, let me know if you're interested in that either in the comments or I think if you go to the about section on my channel on I'll, uh, I'll check this, but I'm pretty sure I already have the four business inquiries email set up that you can find there, like I said, under the about section on the, on the channel page, and you can send me an email if you want. I don't think YouTube messages exist anymore, but um, anyways, so that's it. Thanks for watching.